That's, that's pretty good. Good evening, Dennis. Hello. Hello. How, how, how are you today? I'm just fine. Just fine. Chuckling away are you... as ever. Well, that's... Because it is, it is after all... What, what, what hour is it? I forgot. It is after... Hold on. Let me look at my watch. Oh, it's happy hour. Indeed. You got it. Happy hour. Uh, well... Yeah, so tonight, as I mentioned, I am drinking a 42-ounce Milwaukee's Best Ice... I got it for $1.79 at the local store. It's almost 6% alcoholic volume. And actually, because I was so thirsty for a beer, and this is the only beer that's here, yes. it tastes pretty good. It tastes pretty good. Whoa. So I'm, I'm out of the loop with ounces. These are fluid ounces, of course. 42 ounces is 1.2 liters. Holy shit. For buck seventy nine. That's some cheap-ass beer. Well, By do the man. math. It's, it's even if it's a penny a sip, it's okay with me. But it's in a big. The other thing I like about it, a penny it's a in a big chug. It's in a big chug bottle. Yeah. So the, the the top of it is quite large, much larger than a regular bottle. Ah, so you you're just supposed guzzle to guzzle it. You're not supposed to. That's I healthy. Put, I, want to, I want to go so far. That's, I'm just saying. That's healthy. That it's sort of like, well, we'll design it this way in case that's why you bought it. In case you're going to drink this as you turn around the block after you leave the store. Right. In, in, here in Spain, sometimes, I mean, there are beers in the stores that are sold as one liter. That's just a big metal, a big metal, a big glass bottle uh, that I would imagine is uh, supposedly for sharing. But, you know, one Who doesn't knows? have to. Well, I'm sharing it here with you because it is, after <laughs> all. Happy, Happy hour. hour. It's all I could scratch up. We're yeah. on the dole now, so the so everything has a place. We use envelopes and we put in money and when you're on the dole you got to make every penny count so i squeezed this out of the budget you, you it was put, either this or it was either this or like one good bottle of amber ale well so instead i get <laughs> one good 12 ounce bottle of amber ale for for that dollar 79 so i opted for this right okay so clearly you're building up to the fact that we need to tell people that they need to go to patreon.com slash happy hour and buy Dennis a, a real drink, not this liter of piss that he's drinking today. AC now. These are potential sponsors. I'm right across the lake from Milwaukee. This is supposed to be a positive thing. Why are you why well, are you calling it piss? They need they now, need to sponsor Yo Milwaukee. Or, or what? Or what? You're gonna continue to call their product piss? Well, we we would talk nice, favorably Eric. about That's nice. the Wisconsin. You've turned lockers. into quite the entrepreneur. I must say, entrepreneur. How would what? you say that? In, how would you say it in Spanish? I don't know. Entre uh. um, entrepreneur. I don't know. Entrepreneur. <laughs> it's a French. It's a French word. I, <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> oh boy, your French accent is a delight. So I'm sure, that's how you met your wife. I have a, a story that occurred in France. On my way back, after landing briefly in your lovely snowy state. Detroit. Uh, Detroit. Go I, Tigers. I flew from Detroit. I didn't see any Tigers there. Uh, but I flew from there to Paris, Charles de Gaulle, CDG airport. And when, when I got out of the plane... And I had like two hours to get to my next gate, right? And I thought two hours is plenty of time, but then I had to like trend. I had to go. I was confused. It felt like I hadn't gone through uh, immigration. Like I went, I went very far. I went out to where it looked like I could just walk out to the street, and then but then I had to take a take a train to get to my other terminal to get to my next flight, and I was like, what? Why is there no immigration here? This is very, right, very right. strange. Uh, because I was, I was like 30 minutes or 40 minutes in the airport transit system trying to get to my next uh, terminal to, to fly somewhere. And I hadn't hit the immigration line yet. And I thought, this is very strange. I am going to talk about this on my podcast, that there's no immigration here. But then I got to my next terminal, the apparently all flights to Europe terminal. And I was hit by a long immigration line. Uh -huh. 
And I went, so I was, I saw this long line snaking in front of me and I got in line and my right leg, my right shin itched a little bit. So I reached down and scratched a little bit and it, uh, and it seems that it's, uh, I must've scratched something off and it started bleeding. And so here I am in, in an hour of immigration thing where I can't really exit the line because then I would be put way back because there's a huge line behind me now. I got there when the, the line was short. I got there when the, the time, line was relatively yeah. short. And when I was in the line for five minutes, there was another hour behind me of, of people that had come and were in line. And it was moving really slowly. And my leg was bleeding. And so, and, I was bad, like, I mean, and I was like, well, that, that's, you know, I can, sort of, I can sort of feel a little trickle down there. But then yeah. I look. Then I look down. Up at your stock. The, well, then I look down, and my blue jeans are sort of soaked with blood down there. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, no. Well, but well, like, I can't. It? I can't go anywhere. It's just a. It's just a light trickle. But like, my jeans were in contact and were just wicking away all the blood, and. <laughs> Uh, I ended up with these with these three <laughs> huge bit of a horror story. Yes, you're gonna have to explain it with these three huge it's blood stains notable. on my on my pants, and I'm and I'm here walking back and forth with other people that are going through immigration, and I'm wondering uh, is anyone is anyone noticing that I'm clearly it, I can clearly hemorrhaging? Uh, smell it, right? If there was a a, a immigration well, dog, they weren't sharks. The dog would come sniff. Huh? Right. Yeah, yeah. So so, your leg. so anyway, I I'm sort of acting like I don't know what's going on, but also. I'm not paying attention to other people's shins. Like I, I don't. That's not right. a thing that did I did. You notice. know, start when when yours was bleeding. Did you start looking at everyone's to make sure that you weren't alone? <laughs> I, did, did you? I became did conscious you, of. Did you become the? Other did you become legs. the exception to the rule? Yes. Apparently. Yeah. So finish, and now it is. So so I go through. Nobody goes around watching shins unless, of course, their own shin is bleeding. Exactly. So anyway, there I get have. I get through. Uh, it takes an hour and. Some people are really anxious in front of me because, like, their flight is leaving soon. But and how are you on time? I, I was, I was sort of tracking that it looked like I was going to have about twenty minutes once I got through this to get to my gate to be on time. Uh, so I wasn't panicking or I wasn't like trying to call over an official or something. And Lord knows, French people are not helpful in that sort of way. Of if, if you're not speaking French, they will be like, "Well, too bad." Uh, right. But anyway, I made it through. And then you get to the final bit of the line and there there were like 15 little booths available to go to and they were occupied by two different like there were two of them that were that were functioning which is just, all the others were closed were closed yeah and there were there were a couple maddeningly there were a couple that had uh that had police looking people in them that were that were there typing on their computers but the the light was off that they were they weren't open so anyway you get there, and then you watch the people that were just in front of you that were like really hurried about time, and they start yeah, making, yeah, yeah. and they, they start making small chat with the with the fucking immigration people, like instead of oh well, it's my first time in Paris, I'm so happy. It's like, dude, you were just waiting in hey. line for an hour, waiting for these people to get get us through like cattle, and now you're you want to be yeah, well, friends. You misunderstood what they were really getting anxious about was getting ready to be able to talk to him. Right, they didn't care about getting there. That's yeah, I just. He, did he look like uh, uh, someone who is like a movie star type, like a Ricardo Montalban, the you know the the dude that they're thinking, well, we can't wait to catch no, up with Ricardo. They were just uh, no? your typical no. French cops. And so anyway, I, I made it through and I made it to my gates four minutes before my boarding started. But here I am uh, with with my blood. Did you rush at the end? Like, did you rush at the end? I mean, I walked at a reasonable, good pace. To not, yeah, okay. I wasn't running. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm getting at. Otherwise, I would, so would leave you, a trail did of you blood. you attend to your leg once you were on the pl- <laughs> Actually, I... I, <laughs> I, can, I can picture you kind of starting to limp from loss of blood <laughs> right. with a soaked white sock that's now blood red dripping on the carpet. And they're going to board you and you're going to hope that they don't see you. And the thing you're doing is you're looking at all of their shims and they're looking at you saying, what are you, look, what are you looking at? And so you're drawing attention to yourself. Did you sneak in with your blood-soaked pants like some uh, Hannibal Lecter and what? Yeah, like a like a shark attack victim. No, I I ah. I walked I walked through. I I said nothing. That would have been that would have been fun. You should have bought a toy shark <laughs> and wedged it onto your leg there. Yes. And you could you could have charged. 
money for people to see it. I could have I could have limped to to bring attention to myself, but I I you could have said you you could have gone to security and said, "Excuse me, I'm not feeling well, and I I seem to have a pain in my leg, but I don't know why. <laughs> I can't feel my foot." <laughs> Yeah. Because you've got a shock hanging on your knee. Well, as far as I know, well, no one no one said, hey, you got a problem there? Uh, right. Until I got all the way out in, of the airport in Spain and my wife said, what the fuck happened to your pants? Right. Which, as wives are ten, wives look at shins. <laughs> so. I think wives will look at blood. Well, that too. Yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't, in the end, it wasn't uh, that different. It could have been mud at that point because it was just sort of a darkened color. Right. But, uh, yeah, so anyway, I w- was bleeding oh, in Paris. pretty strange. Bleeding in Paris. That could be our episode title. Oh, yeah, it could be. We'll see. Yes. We need a song to go with it. Let's see. Uh, give, me a, give me a little French. da 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 what would a French tune sound like? Come on, you there? Play one. Oh, oh. mon mon song. <laughs> I don't know. I don't well, know how to say blood in, in in French. We could always bring back images of Milan Rouge, but shan't. Well, that was like you a, still that was like a leg it. a leg rouge. Have you seen it, Milan Rouge? No, I promised to on my flight over, but then I didn't. My my flight back was sh- the shortest my pond hop has ever been, I think, because Detroit is so far north, uh-huh. as is Paris relatively, and instead of Minneapolis, and or... also and also last week they recently set the record for the shortest uh, transatlantic flight uh, because the winds are so strong. Uh, Delta did. I don't know who it was, but it, it was the it was the the fastest uh, subsonic. Uh, crossing, uh-huh. it was like five, how many hours? It was like five hours or something, or instead of it, well, normally it's like seven or sometimes eight. Mine was mine was six. Huh. Well, that's convenient. Great, Hold getting on. home a little sooner. Well, the wow, so. The fastest ever transatlantic flight, subsonic, was set. I know this article is from February 9th, 2020, and it was four hours. Well, four hours and 56 minutes. So five hours from New, yeah, York, you know, New, New, York, sure. New York to London. So my six hours from Detroit to Paris was right. pretty similar. But yeah. what happened was it meant that. First of all, there wasn't much time to sleep, and also I couldn't sleep because I was just uncomfortable in my seat. Uh, but also, there, there wasn't a lot of time for movie watching. Why and were you uncomfortable in your seat? Because I don't know. I'm I'm tall, and I just we had a middle seat. Couldn't get comfortable. I was on the aisle, so the most of the transatlantic flights I've been on are uh, two four two. Uh, yeah. configuration and I was on the aisle in the middle and by luck there was no one nobody next to me but there oh, were, the, other, but the other two seats were, were filled and but the Did guy the arm go up the, but the guy that was sharing my common space in my common space I got to use my I got to fold down the tray table and use my laptop in a way that's uh-huh, way more uh-huh. comfortable than, than trying to do oh, it in yeah. front of me like a tyrannosaur right, uh, right. and but the guy on the other <laughs> side uh <laughs> What? Well, that's quite an image. If you should, uh, hey, you should post that. If one, you, I, I, it is really uncomfortable I know, to use. I know. Hey, and, and, and so return me to that. But let's remember the the news that broke today about the the video where the guy in the airplane is punching <laughs> the back of a lady's seat like this. Boom! Boom! I did not boom, see this. boom! 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 And this and, and she's video recording it, and he's just boom! Boom! Push! Punch! 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 Oh my God! Back to your story. Sorry. I mean, I've been with a five-year-old behind me that was doing that, but... 
Oh yeah, that, no, this this was. I'll tell you. I'll tell you a story I thought of the other day, and it's, it bothered me a little bit. It's from a while ago, where I was in an airplane, and we were in a, a tight, um, a small plane, two and two, and uh, uh, maybe a large, little larger plane. But these people came in, and there there wasn't enough room in the luggage rack. They were late to get there, and the woman who was trying to get into her seat had a bag very similar to my bag and it wouldn't fit under the seat the way that she was trying to, to, to jam it. And I politely leaned forward from my seat across the aisle. I was aisle on the other side. She was um, window on the other side. And I said, if you drop it down first, you'll slide in. And she turned to me with a vile look and she said, I'm not an 11 year old. Well, then do and... it right. <laughs> that would have been... If I thought you could do it, I wouldn't, I was I wouldn't so, have given you... A... I was so flummoxed. Right. And I, I, uh, I, said, I said, I was just trying to be helpful. And I just sat back in my seat and I looked at the person next to me and I said, no good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> and it was kind of interesting because why would... Maybe she was flustered and she didn't appreciate it, but she was, in fact, bam, bang, bang, trying to... Get it under, and there was some pressure there. You know, I mean, why do people turn, uh, assume, I don't know. Why Why is it negative? I don't know. It's not I like, didn't have a tone. I didn't say, I didn't say, hey, quit, <laughs> quit banging the bag. If you just drop it, it'll go in. I didn't do that. It's, no, my, my voice was high like this. So, hey, you know. These days, it's, it's hard to, I don't know. It's hard to. Try and give helpful helpful advice without you know being accused of mansplaining oh, or something. I don't know. Yeah, I did. I did hit you with uh, 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 the, the TV series. Um, shit. Do 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 do. And so, can you hear that? Yeah, that's so, a good mic. If you can hear that, it's across the table. So anyway, back to my back to my harrowing story. Interesting. I I made a terrible decision. Like all of the all of the Oscar nominated best pictures were available on the on the in flight entertainment. And on the one hand, I didn't really want to see a great movie on a tiny screen, but uh anyway, I watched uh Judy this uh oh, did you? Judy Garland movie it, which uh, where Renee, Renee Zellweger, Zellweger won, won the, the best, best actress, actress yes. right? And uh, So I heard it was great. How was it? It was good. It's it's Uh-oh. it felt a little. That's not great. No, uh, I mean, it, Hollywoodish. It felt a little Hollywood wankery, uh, uh-huh. in a way. You know, like uh, oh, let's look back at the, one of our greatest uh, singers and dancers and entertainers and tr- tribute to her. Renee Zellweger was fantastic, uh, of course. Uh, she did all her own singing. I would imagine. Uh, but it was it was it was good. It wasn't. Uh, I, I'm I'm not going to recommend all my friends see it or go and try and watch it again really? or anything. Even 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 with her performance notwithstanding, meh. Uh, they weren't the price of the ticket to see her performance. It's a Academy Award winner. It's historical. Well, the airline ticket was I mean, pretty expensive, but uh, the but oh, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's 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 good. The answer to that is no. It wasn't a very good movie. Yeah, it's it, it's good. It's I've seen, I don't know, I've seen quite a few uh, troubled, depressed entertainer uh, people. Uh, like everyone has taken everything from me since I was little. Stories and it was for sure one of those. And for sure in real life, I imagine Judy Garland was uh, basically sucked dry of her soul. Uh, f- from by Hollywood executives, uh, which that was apparent in the movie, right? So and yeah, so I, I a, said a big part of the, what the movie was about. That was about? a big part of the movie that 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 from age two when she was singing on stage, uh, she she was marked for you are never going to be like all the other girls. You can you can try if you want to. In fact, the very first opening monologue is a Hollywood executive telling her, look. Uh, you can pretend like you're like all the other girls and there are girls in every town in America that are prettier than you and thinner than you, 
but they don't have what you have, which is your voice, and that's going to make you uh, transcendent. How old is she? Uh, in this particular at, 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 the beginning, at the beginning of the movie, well, and the, the opening shot of the movie is like two minutes looking at this young girl's face. Uh, and I don't know, she's uh, 15 or something. Uh, 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 but uh, it's it's uh, was very, it was very much about how Hollywood uh, just sucked the soul out of this person right. and made her. Did it touch? How much was Mickey Rooney in, in her marriage to him in the script? Uh, very briefly, there was a. Uh, the, there, it was spoke. It was spoken about as uh, as future Judy talking about how she how she loved this Mickey guy, it, but uh, he wasn't a character. I don't recall. But anyway, uh, uh, it was it was it was good. I wasn't I wasn't upset with my time spent watching it. However, then I made a bad choice. Uh oh. I wasn't. I was. I was tired, and I didn't want to think a lot. And I chose. You wanted a comedy. You would think like always. The comedy is the right way to go with that. You should choose a when you're tired. An sure. Adam Sandler movie or some some bullshit like that. Stupid. Stupid. Uh, but instead, I chose a different kind of stupid, uh, which was It 2. <laughs> the horror movie. <laughs> and I haven't seen the first It. Eric. Eric. <laughs> you said... I told you it was a stupid... You said earlier that you were talking about your flight and you said that it was... And you found it. You didn't have enough time to sleep. Well, if you no, it wasn't because of that. It, no. What? Have you seen this? Have you seen oh, it? Oh, I'm, I'm surprised you didn't doze off during it. Well, oh my God, that's hilarious. Ha- have you seen it? Or it no, too? I've not seen either of them, but I know that they're horror. I know the Jetter. You know, yeah, I know yeah. they're fantastic. Yeah, right? I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm familiar with Stephen King, and uh, and it was speaking of which, right? And it was. It was it was bad. It was just on the side of bad that, like, there was enough character development that I sort of cared about these these characters not enough to turn it off. But God, it was stu- it was stupid. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. I really don't was uh, was Bill uh, Hadler ha- yes. Bill uh, Hater in it? Yes, he was. That's probably why you watched it. Well, that that was when I saw him. I was like, well, yeah, it's I, the only I reason I would have watched it because yes. to see what what he was like. He's a... and his character was a was a stand up comic, uh, but. It He's, was. I like him a lot. It was. It was. Uh, like I don't get. I don't get the scary vibe of. Here is the the severed head of a dead child that suddenly grows spider legs and runs around the room and scares people. Like, I don't. That, <laughs> that doesn't register so with me. You, like I don't. I I don't lose sleep over that. No, I don't. That's. It doesn't. So are you telling me that I'll have nightmares? I'll be up all night. Yes. Well, it was. I don't want that. You just planted that image in my head. Like, well, there you why go. Why would you do? Huh? Well, that's it... so terrible. What you just said. Exactly. Terrible. And, terrible. Well, and that was that was the lightest of the huh? of the horrors. But the like that stuff has no no effect on me whatsoever. It. Um, I'm much more affected by the creepy psychological. Uh, Am I going insane? Seen, type of movies. Have you seen? Have you seen Dexter? I, the series. The I, every single episode. Yes. Oh no, kidding. Yes. I, We've I, never. I watched never that. been mentioned. No. Nope. Never been mentioned between us in forty. How many? How many episodes? This is forty-eight. Where are we? Forty-eight. Happy hour. Dot FM slash zero four eight. Two four eight. Who do we appreciate? Yes, I, I watched every single episode. Uh, that was. That was Milwaukee's cool. best ice. Well, so this is what happened to me the other night: is that I was uh, doing a little channel surfing, yes. and came came across that, and so oh boy, I have a Showtime, right? And I said, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that for a long, long time. And I tried to figure out when was the last episode I saw because I followed it for four or five seasons, whatever. And it's on. It's is it still Active? No, 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 no. It it, it closed. Yeah. It closed like seven years ago. But it, it probably oh, but it probably it went for eight. Years. It probably went for eight seasons or something. Eight years. Eight years, something like that. So I ended up in season six, and opened it up and and recalled how, I mean, just watching it was just so crazy. Dexter went for eight so, seasons and it finished seven years ago. So 
you that know was exactly of which you speak. That was it was eerily accurate. Ear. Eerily. Eerily. Oh, through is is that Latin for through the ear? No, it's the opposite of lately. Ear. <laughs> no, that's early. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> right. right. Or it's a Great Lakes reference. I don't know. Um, so. So I was in the I was in the uh, in the gym the other day, and I had grabbed on the way to the gym out of my little. Is this related to Dexter? Did you did you slaughter yes. someone? Well, no, no, I'm I'm not the I'm not the monster you would have me be. Uh, you can uh, I'm sure there's others you know, who are probably more oh, closer yeah. to that. I I know all the vigilantes, but yes, continue. <laughs> what? The vigilantes. Is that what you said? Vigilantes. Those are people that take justice into their own hands, like Dexter, and uh, kill the bad guys. Uh, uh, Not good. like you. You let the bad guys go free. Continue. There's too many good guys. That's part of the problem. Well. Anyway, you're at the gym. Oh. And so <laughs> I said, I pulled this pair of underwear out of my out of my locker, out of my gym bag. And I grabbed the wrong pair of underwear, and this was the pair of underwear that I bought that doesn't have a, a slit in it to get your junk out. It's just like what I would call a pair of women's underwear. Whoa! But they're men's underwear, and they like they just they're they're they're, they're sewn. Slitless. So there's like a sack for your junk. But so I didn't know this. A slitless sack. When I first I, I put them on, I, I, this was when I first bought them. They said we're on sale. Now I know why. So I I I I, I got them on, and I gotta go. I gotta go piss, and I can't, there's no way to get to my stuff. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm, trying, I'm I gotta go to the bathroom. Super stout. I'm trying to find the where's the slit? No uh -huh. slit. There's no slit. So they got jack the shit up and crimp and whatever. And, and so I'm at the Y, and and I, I had to go around the wrong underwear. And I said, "What the hell?" And I held these up, and there was a dude there, and I said, "Have you seen these underwear with no slit for your for your junk?" He says, I know it, man. I know it. Drive me crazy. <laughs> right? Because he had experienced the same thing. Yeah. I think I could have got the whole locker room going about it. But apparently it's a, a designer thing where, I don't know, they got these slender young men in posters that have on these jockey shorts that somehow are cooler or just, I don't know, sexier because they don't have a slit in them? No, no, Are no. you kidding me? Do you know what you need? Scissors. Well, but then, and then the junk will just hang out all the time. It won't, well, it'll be a, it'll oh, be it's true. You're, you need I, an overlapping slit. That's true. It's not. That's no, it's true. More I did not think through my, my plan there. More engineer, uh, engineeringly sophisticated, <laughs> what your apparently slow addled mind can, can produce. I want you to, I think you should draw a picture. You have, I don't. Do you have paper, pencil there? I don't, have a about it. I don't have a degree in penile engineering. I haven't haven't studied this the way the the body interacts with the clothing. Yeah, understood. You're not you did it college. Did you see the did you see the the post of the the woman that had a t-shirt on that said I didn't do college but college was spelled collage? No, but I think you've mentioned that to me before. I have. Well, I think so. It still still brings a laugh. <laughs> yeah. No, so, I, I what I told you was in a urinal that it said that somebody had etched it out in, in ink on the wall. I didn't do college. No, it is someone. I didn't college. I didn't collage. That's, in the case of the T-shirt, which is the second okay. story. Oh, okay. Neither one of which you appreciate very much. Apparently, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the best I can I, to interest you in some tete a tete. But you. So what's on your mind? You have another tete -tete -tete. vignette. You have notes. What does your note say? Another. Do you have a story, a vignette? So what has happened in Spain, España, since you've been back? You're getting ready for a transcontinental trip. Oh, my God. Uh, I just did one, yes. I'm where are you going? I'm going to go see the kangaroos. <laughs> so I managed to make it all the way to Russia with and back without buying little Russian dolls that, you know, the little things that fit inside each other. Yeah, I know. 
and and because uh, my wife and I just you know thought why would we don't we don't want this we're not going to play with this we don't want a thing to sit on the shelf that we have to clean dust off of we don't need Russian dolls but man I don't know if I'm going to be able and I've never been to Australia I've never been to Australia so I don't know what the what the merchandising tourism uh, deal is there but. I kind of want to buy a boomerang. Uh huh. Have you Just, ever thrown one? Well, I did last week, and did you? I'm still worried. Where? Where? In North Carolina? Oh. <laughs> you threw you threw one last week and never came back, and now you're worried all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. No, uh, we dinner, didn't I we? don't know. For, for, we had quite a nice dinner, didn't we? For for sure. It was it was some wild stories, man. For, there were some wild stories over dinner. It says we worked our way through five kinds of liquor and alcohol until until we were down to two 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 beers in the fridge. Yeah, well, oh, our guests were like, "Whoa, whoa!" These people are 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 cool. They thought, yeah. Well, they staggered staggered home. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. I one wonders what's because I have to bring something back for the children, of course. But uh-huh. but if you go to Australia, what do you what do you what do you buy? As a I'm so not, for, I have I'm a, not I, I'm not buying a didgeridoo. I don't care about blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> Eric. This is this is the best impersonation. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the best imitation. <laughs> Of a tissue do I've ever heard, and Pete Buttigieg plays one, <laughs> along mean, with electric nice. guitar, bass guitar, piano, and harmonica. He plays a tissue do. <laughs> <laughs> and so there's this there's a musician here in Michigan who who to his great credit I think you've plays a tissue do, yeah. and his name is Harper. And you need to link to him and with his didgeridoo stuff because it is way cool. He jams out with this shit. Mm-hmm. And he's also a very accomplished harmonica player. And so, you know, they're, they're both percussion and et cetera, et cetera. Although when he's got this thing up on stage, I mean, the motherfucker's like six foot long. Right, right, right. right. It's like, whoa, he's like blowing into a log. Yeah. It's, it's got a weird sound, but he's able to. To, to, to turn it into the the, the bluesy uh, uh, genealogy, yeah, man. It's, get, get it's good. Rhythm. Harper. All right. Harper. Well, and you can you can imagine it like a bass, right? An like a, undertone sure, of sure. a right. Oh God, that's funny. Oh God, well, laugh out loud. I sh- it's either that or did you don't? <laughs> did you do? Or didgeridon. It's gonna, actually didgeridonut because it's a didgeridonut circle. I'm going to didgeridonut. And the, I think. The, the, the mouthpiece is in the center of the circle, like a tuba, but it's circular. So we went to uh, we went to the uh, ice frozen lake, Michigan yesterday. Uh, I'll send you a couple of pictures to post. And this neatest thing was happening, where the ice uh, it's been, you know very very cold below zero, but this year a mild winter. The ice buildup by the beach doesn't go out very far. Where I grew up, it went out for as far as you could see. I mean, and that's quite a ways when you're standing up on a shore. It's 10, 11 miles out, but on warmer weather, blah, blah, blah. But here on Lake Michigan, it wasn't very it wasn't very much ice at all, but the waves were big, and they were coming in. So the lapping of the waves got underneath the ice, mm-hmm. and the lapping waves created holes in the ice jam so that when the waves came in, it looked like little tiny volcanoes. Cool. Holes in the ice jam. Holes in the ice jam. Whoa. 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 It's like ice did you deuce. (laughs) That's that's That's, wild, man. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So what if I, we... You would have to do this. You yes. have to fly here and do this because I'm not going out on that ice. It's dangerous. Crawl out there, uh-huh. your hands and knees. Although I do want you to Google and then put in the post notes the new horseshoes that are seven layers of plastic stair steps that when you lift them, 
they turn into stair steps, and when you put them down, they're a flat board that Horseshoes? you can walk across anything. Horseshoes. For horses to walk on? For you. For you and your cloven feet. Ah, yes. Feet. I'm a lot of people don't know my ungulateness. what you yes. look like. They know about the forehead and all that, yeah, but yeah, they yeah. don't know, as you've never really demonstrated on air, that you have, in fact, the torso of a beast, of a goat. Four legs. I don't know how you fit them under your desk, but it's probably true. Well, it, it you is. are a cloven. You are a cloven individual. Man. Yes. What? Uh, yes, I. It's it's hard. It's full picture. It's hard. Yes. I wanted to send you a picture that I took. Let's see if this shows up in your chatty McChat bot. Look at your. Oh yeah. This is. Got it. This is a picture I took from the airplane, and then I went and I looked in Google Maps, and I found that this is Dearborn Hills Golf Course in Detroit. Ah. That I flew over. Yes. And I don't know. Where, I, know I know. I know generally where it is. And the picture on the left is the snow. That's uh, the one I took from the plane, obviously. And the other is it's uh, an interesting curve because that's the window of the airplane. I'll take it. Indeed, yes. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. and I was looking out and I was looking out and I was thinking, man, it's snowy where Dennis lives. And then I saw, ooh, look, there's a golf course. And I took a picture. And then I went and I looked in Google Maps and I was like, what are the golf courses near the airport? And let me see if I can figure out where there's a sh- lake shaped like that. And I found it. There you go. And there you go. Bingo. So you're like an intrepid explorer. That will be in the show notes. And if if a listener knows how to look at the cover art for our chapters in our podcast, you will discover that image there as well. But so I will secret. I will send you I will send you the. Uh, it's interesting that this happened that you're posting this because being in, in North Carolina together, I flew home as well, and I took a picture from the airplane. Did you? Of, uh, of sunrise, and it's quite the picture. And I will send you that. You can post that as well. So there, there you go. You and I, different airplanes, different times, taking pictures. This is a beautiful relationship. High bro. altitude photography. <laughs> what? Hey, you. You better not give me a hard time, you. I'll take you outside and I'll give you a thrashing. So... You did, you you did cop a James Cagney uh, 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 motif when we were we were at the beach. Hey yo! Yeah. So I, I I wanted to briefly mention this thing that I discovered today. It is this ridiculous product, and by no means well, I won't say that we don't endorse this product, but there's this product that will be linked in the show notes called a cuss collar. And what this is, is a collar that you can put on your dog. And every time they bark, it's, it emits a cuss word. So when your dog bark, so, and they have this adorable little video of this, of this cute little couple. And they're like, Oh, our dog is just the cutest ever. And Oh, we would love to know what he's saying when he's, when he barks. And so they put this collar on him. And every time he barks, he's, he's like, fuck shit, motherfucker. <laughs> And <laughs> it's, that's, you're posting that. It's that's, it's that's it's, it's it's totally so, it's Why did we think of that? God it's, damn it! It's totally that's so. The kind of that's the kind of stuff we try to it's, get to work. Get the stock is currently sold out, but it but it it costs sixty dollars. Wait the, a minute! For this, wait a minute! <laughs> for this little thing you put around, you you we could modify it and have it and, yes. have, and have it children, young children. So you put it around a, a two year two and a half year old's neck, and when they say "I'm on this," it 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 does. It can't it says, be cuss words. Where, it can't where, be cuss words. Where's my fucking milk, be, mommy? It no, can't be cuss words. That's no. too no, terrible. It can't. What would it be? It would be I don't know. Yeah, it, it could be. It could be. Um, huh. No. It forget it. Be Bobcat. Forget. It could be Bobcat Goldthwait doing. Oh, I, I want my own or, or I. Uh... Hey, hey, we could make the kids sound like a didgeridoo. It would sell like truckloads. <laughs> <in Australia. laughs> 
<laughs> oh, this is terrible. Did you read? Did you read Toddler? No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I did you read Toddler too? I saw this on the internet today, and I will put that in the show notes and uh, buy it if you want. You know what? You know what it should be. We should make our own. It should be customizable. You know how we have our uh, our directions when we are driving, uh, when we're together, where we have recorded your your voice saying things like, "Oh fuck, man, the cops are coming up." Uh, we should we All should right. we should have a way to have we should have a collar that we can pre-record your your voice saying, "Hey, man, I'm hungry," or <laughs> "What the fuck? There's a dog out there," or. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or, right. or or like or fuck that or, fucking cat or whatever. What's going on? What's going on? What is that? What's that noise? What is that smell? I thought I heard I thought I heard some kibbles. Yeah. Oh lord. Yeah, oh, oh, so so here's the thing. So connected the show notes to uh, Cynthia Revo and you know, she is the star of Harriet and at the Academy Awards, she sang the tune from Harriet with a, with a chorus that I want you to see, too, which goes out in the audience. And, and it's quite an astounding performance. She's also playing Aretha Franklin in the much-anticipated biopic. And she is the woman seer in The Outsider. She is awesome in The Outsider. Wow. I, I love her to death. First. I knew her first in The Outsider. I, I never. Uh, she's amazing. She, yes, she's so good. So, oh my God, <laughs> she's, she's doing Aretha. See, Holy shit! Yes, but the the and there's two glimpses that that you can connect to instantly. One is uh, most recently they show a, a makeover of her as Aretha Franklin, and I'm sure there's some music in that or attached to that. But early on, when she was just had been announced, she was started right away. I saw her on a talk show. I think it was Stephen Colbert. Mm -hmm. And he said, could you just... And she just smiled and she said, sure. And she just did it. God. Boom. I'll, I'll put that so, in the show notes, uh, that YouTube video. Astounding, but... Her and, wow. Right, so... The, like, I, the I, had other, I had never, ever heard of her. I'd never seen her before until I watched The Outsider. And... Uh, so here's a connection wow. I want to make with you. With Dexter. Yes. Season six. Uh... None other than Colin Hanks stars in the beginning of Colin. an entire season. Yes. Colin Hanks. Yes. So you remember this mm -hmm. because of him, perhaps. Mm -hmm. And he has a sister in that whole sh show. Yes. Series. Yes. That year. That sister is the woman who plays Terry Maitland's wife, whose name you'll have to remind me of. Terry Maitland being the uh, uh, Jason Bateman's character, the murderer, the, the dual, the dual personality. Yeah, yeah, the the, two, the, the one that's in the, the one that's in Ray, Don, Ray Donovan and everything. No, 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 man, we're talking about uh, uh, the Outsider. Yeah, and, she's not Ray Donovan. And remember, okay. Uh yes, yes, I, I, yes, I like her a lot. Um. When she in in the last episode, when she screamed out, "Are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me? You turned this into a a what?" And she left. And then later, she called uh, El Coco, El Cuckoo. And I can only imagine it was so funny, even though she was in her anguish when she said it. Quite an actress. Wait the 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 wife of the accused in the Outsider. Is Julian Nicholson, who I yes. who I love, and I have been a fan of hers since she she was in a she was in a show called Conviction, which was a spinoff of Law and Order in two thousand six that I really uh -huh. liked. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And but I don't see her in Dexter. Dexter. No. Yes. No. Season six. No. Yes. Yeah, I think you are mistaken. Uh no. Yeah. Her IMDb is mistaken. Maybe the wrong season. Maybe no. I'm in the wrong season. Uh, do, do, do you know the name of the character? Uh, no. I'll, I'll, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm starting there, so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll double check my notes. We'll come back to it.
How funny was that link that I sent you? Uh, so the which one? The the one about Joe Biden. I I <laughs> a couple years ago a couple years ago I challenged my conservative Facebook friends. I said, look, uh, are there any are there any websites that are funny satire that are conservative? The Onion, yeah, 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 yeah. Like like the Onion, and yeah. and. There are very, very few, but one of them that was given to me was uh, BabylonB.com, which I will link in the show notes. And they, and I, I, is that what you sent me? Yes. And, and I, I immediately followed them and I've been watching them for a couple of years now. And most of their stuff is kind of stupid. Like you would need cheesy. Well, no. It's like you would need to believe all of the uh, Hillary is the devil sort of Fox News uh, jargon yeah, in, order yeah, to, yeah. in order to appreciate these things. But uh, sometimes they land jokes on on right. on the Democrats that are actually funny. Right. And anyway, I sent you this article called um, Struggling Biden Campaign Now Offering One Month of Free AOL for Rally Attendance. Right. <laughs> and it just so connects with how it's very old funny. school, how old school, yeah, like right. how 1994 his campaign is. Right. And right. it's like malarkey. We're going to no send more malarkey. We're going to send you CDs so you can connect to, to America uh, online. Poor Joe. Poor Joe. Do you know about his other two presidential bids? He didn't do well. Yeah. He didn't do well. He didn't do well. And 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 now uh, so here's here's my dilemma just to just to age us a bit here is that on Super Tuesday, March uh, 3rd, this is right around the, the corner here. I ha- I I have to decide what Democratic candidate I'm going to vote for. And in New Hampshire, what was the third most popular vote choice in the electorate? I don't know in the polls was third. I still don't know who I'm going to vote for. Well, I, uh, when I was in the States, although, although I, could, I could have done everything that I did when I was there from where I am here in Spain, uh, I communicated with, with voting offices that were a mile from where I was to request my absentee ballot and to you voted? do all the things. And I received my absentee, absentee ba- ballot. And I did all of the crazy um, thing where I where I do an image capture of the little oval that I have to fill out, and I load it into Photoshop, and I fill out the oval into Photoshop, and then I copy and I paste it, and I put it in the PDF, and then I do this print thing where I can vote. You uh, had to do that again, or that's what you avoided? No, no, no. That's what I. That's what I. What I avoided was printing it out and filling it out with pencil, and then scanning it back in. Uh, but so I. But I, there were so many different races where, first of all, because I requested the Democratic uh, primary ballot, I I'll, I I could not vote on party lines because everyone on my ballot was 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 in the Democratic Party. So I went and I did a little bit of research on every one of the seven or eight uh, things that I had to research, and I f- I looked up people and some people. Some of the candidates don't even have a website. Like if you Google their names, they come out as as they're like three listings, but they're the three listings are people that are running for office in some state somewhere. And anyway, uh, I I have voted in the primary in North Carolina. Yes, and yeah. so uh, so I am fascinated by what you've done. Is there more you want to talk about in terms of some of your decisions? Uh, Ooh, I, was... I just wonder. I'm curious, and I can understand if you don't want to say, but who might you have voted for for the Democratic nomination for president of the United States? Well, there was one that was for the, the Congress where I looked around, and there was some – I can't remember her name right now uh, – there was some woman that was, uh, ah, no, it was, it was for the, for the, for the, for the education, for the board of education or something. And 
there was one there was one person that was an African American woman who uh, who doesn't accept uh, pack money and is all in favor of the of the Green New Deal and all of the all of the super liberal shit that I that I like uh, for Senate that I chose I think I can't remember it's a little, it's been like a week now and uh, yes I will reveal my vote on a, on a later date. <laughs> When I have been proven correct or incorrect. <laughs> oh, a teaser. A teaser. A teaser. Yes. Well, so I could reach over here, which I won't, and pull out my absentee ballot, which I'm not going to complete because I want to experience you the. Uh, present, you want to be a presentee? The voting lines and the. Uh, uh, the, the the numbers that, that show New Hampshire, of course, had record numbers. Very, very good for the for the Democrats. Very, very good. Why after the why why the, the why the fuck is there not a four week window where you can go and vote? Well, and so like, interesting like, point. But uh, let me let me remind you. Let me remind you that because, after Nevada, because because, after because South we want Carolina, there's there's Super Tuesday, which is the closest the United States has come. In, in a couple of different ways to create more of an event that dictates the future. Stupid dude. The fight, the fight has been, in, within the Democratic Party, the Iowans, the New Hampshire, the South Carolina, who refuse, adamant, adamant, the Nevada, to give up their place in the early voting. But Super Tuesday is an example of what one might say, well, that's a good start because there's 11 states and once we're done with Super Tuesday, we have winnowed. So we have winnowed. I just want to say this year, what's the problem? How many? Have we winnowed? Winnowed. How many will we winnow after Super Tuesday? Did you see that movie Winnow? Huh? With the with the dwarf? <laughs> so I just want to say Super Tuesday. Worst superhero ever. <laughs> worstest, worst the superhero worst, ever. Worst, is uh, worst the song, worst the sire sauce, worst worst the stuff, worst the worst worst superhero. So, yeah. Hey, look here, he's the same as Super Tuesday or she, whatever. Well, uh. I don't know this whole thing. Imagine that uh, Michael Bloomberg, right? This is first. I is start with a question. What does it matter? If a guy like Bloomberg has said stupid and awful things, right, about any number of topics, women, race, etc., in an election against Donald Trump, what is Donald Trump going to say? How dare you? <laughs> you no, know, I mean, it's not the same scale. The people that would vote for Bloomberg are offended by that and will not vote. The people that don't give a shit and would vote for Trump. Like, no one, uh, interesting no, point. no one, is, no one is not voting for. I don't know. There, there must be people that would like Trump but won't vote for him because he's an asshole. Right. But man, they don't show up in the in the scales at all. So, I don't know. So, what were the uh, words I sent you the other day? What were the? was a chorus. Yes, I will pull it up. Dennis, blah, blah, blah. Crap. Put it up on the screen. No. <laughs> Another quick side note that we can link to. This, this image of the Daytona 500... Air Force One oh, photo. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, so, yes. The, so, yes. uh, so, what happened was the uh, the Trump campaign posted this photo, which is an amazing photo. It is a great, great photo of a huge crowd of people somehow juxtaposed beneath the beneath Air Force One and behind it. No, behind it, beneath it, just amazing. Yeah, the, amazing. The, the Air Force One is behind it. But they, they said, um, 
real Donald Trump won the Daytona 500 before the race even started, was the was the tweet, and uh, and then the actual photographer that took that photo back in 2004, 2004, 16 right. years ago, 16 years George, ago. George W. Yes. Right? George, George H. W. George no George W. George H. W. was a long time ago. You'll you'll fart. Uh, George W. was president, and he apparently attended somehow the Daytona 500 because right. he's a Texan. three presidents have done. Yeah, and his father's the other one. That's yes, why I asked. but yes, but anyway, the the um, the photographer said, uh, "Well, I haven't been to the Wait Daytona 500 this year, <laughs> but uh, it seems that I won it before it even started." And it's this. It, so, what's what's and this has happened so many times where the Trump administration will put forward this photo of something that looks like it is good for Trump. And then as soon as any fact checker comes along and well, OK, that's not true. Many times fact checkers come along and they don't no good they, care and, they don't, and they don't check. They double down. But in this particular event, uh, because I don't know, because it was a multimedia image uh, thing, they deleted the, t- the tweet. But they, someone, someone pointed out. Oh wait, this thing that you said where Trump sort of won won the Daytona 500 was actually from 16 years ago. They <laughs> and they took it down. Yeah, they took it down. Oh lord. Anyway, oh lord. Yeah. So, so my friend, so my friend, so, I am going to bounce that 42 ounce. Bounce that. It's 40, now gone. Bounce that 42 finished. ounce. I bounced the 42 ounce because I am, after all, part of happy hour. (laughs) 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 So Uh, good good evening to you, Dennis. (laughs) That's it for episode number 48. Next episode will be recorded live from Australia, from the other side of the planet. Show notes for this episode will be at happyhour.fm slash 048. And don't forget, if you go to patreon.com slash happyhour and subscribe to Donate's $10 a month, you can watch our live episode that was episode number 47. And we will see you next week from Australia, mate.